Our team analyzed the effects of radiation, pressure, and temperature on our experiments. We collaborated to share responsibilities and tasks, solidifying the importance of teamwork. We have all come to appreciate each other's individual strengths. For example, Sage dyed her hair while Henry contributed urine, all for science. I was interested to see if the low temperatures of space would affect how gel pens write. I hypothesized that the ink would freeze and dry up, making it so the pen would no longer work. We took writing samples from each pen, but there was no difference between the control and flight pens. I assume that is because the ink had time to thaw after being exposed to the cold. This applies to aerospace science because I wanted to know if pens would be able to write in space with cold temperatures. I also tested to see if excess radiation would impair the integrity and protective qualities of artificial skin. I hypothesized that the skin's integrity would be impaired by radiation. In actuality, the overall integrity of the flight sample remained intact. We worried that if an astronaut was injured, she may need a skin graft, so we wanted to confirm that artificial grafts would not lose their protective qualities while in space. I looked at how dyed hair would change in high radiation. I hypothesized that if dyed hair is exposed to UVB radiation, the color pigment would change to a lighter hue. After comparing the control in flight samples, we discovered by using the purple Pantone color chart that there was a change in the hue. When the dyed hair was exposed to UVB radiation, the color pigment did lighten. I also examined if an eyeball would change due to pressure. I hypothesized that if an eyeball is exposed to low pressure, then the size would expand. One of the main problems that followed was that we did not have constant eyeball imagery during the entire flight. The eyeball was exposed to lower pressures followed by increased pressures during the flight. The results revealed that the eyeball shrunk in size instead of expanding. We performed this test after learning about William Rankin and his death, defying ejection from 47,000 feet into a thunderstorm. Without a pressure suit, he suffered immediate frostbite and decompression, caused his eyes, ears, nose, and mouth to bleed, and his abdomen to swell severely. I wanted to see if bacteria would be affected by a decrease in temperature experienced at higher altitudes. I hypothesized that the bacteria would grow less in lower temperatures. The E. coli actually grew more in the colder temperatures, in comparison to the growth on the ground. Though this is not a regular reaction for this bacteria, we believe that it adapted to the environment around it, as bacteria are very adaptable. This made us wonder about the risk of bacteria growth on the space station. I also wanted to look at the impact of radiation on urine dipsticks to demonstrate how space may affect testing for glucose in the stratosphere. I predicted that the accuracy of the tests would be changed due to the high radiation in the stratosphere. The urine dipstick that was sent to the stratosphere was not able to correctly detect glucose in a diabetic person, unlike the control dipstick. We believe that this is due to the fact that radiation is known to deplete the antioxidants from the reagent used to detect glucose, called glucose peroxidase. This again connects to the health of our astronauts. We want to ensure that the medical supplies that are used on Earth remain accurate in space. Our results were concerning. To see if tardigrades would survive being sent up to low pressures of space based on their high survivability in most extreme conditions on Earth. I predict that they would survive the trip. The tardigrades did not survive space, but also didn't survive their earthly test tube. We suspect that this may be due to lack of oxygen and food for the length of the experiment. We chose tardigrades because we'd like to learn more about their genes. We watched the launch together on the couch eating popcorn. My other project was to test the effectiveness of dental film in space. We thought that the dental film would absorb the radiation and take a picture. Our paper came back from space with a dark spot the same size in shape as the tooth, which the control sample did not have. I believe it worked just as we hypothesized, and the space radiation took an image. This tells us that we have to be very careful when transporting x-rays in space. It really struck me that Colonel Kininger donated the $5,000 prize out of his own pocket, not just Cap's budget. He's saying he believes in us and is willing to invest in us. It is very important that he is the ambassador to this project because it inspires me to work my hardest. If we win the $5,000 grant, we will be sending ourselves to space camp. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity.